Hi guys. In this slideshow, uh, I'm going to go over those practice problems that we did right before we left for spring break. So if you don't need to watch this video, just go ahead and skip it and move on to the next one. Okay, the first thing that you wanna notice on this problem is that there are two different functional groups on the same molecule. We have a carboxylic acid and an amine, and our reagent is thionyl chloride. So hopefully that triggers in your brain that we've um, reacted thionyl chloride with a carboxylic acid before, but we've never seen thionyl chloride react with an amine. So maybe don't get super creative here and go ahead and just react the carboxylic acid with the thionyl chloride. And if we do that, we will end up making an acid chloride. And nothing is going to happen to our amine. But now that we're here, we have a highly reactive functional group, and it's on the same molecule as a pretty good nucleophile. So we're gonna see something happen. This is not gonna be stable the way it is. So the amine is going to attack our acid chloride, and that's gonna push the pi electrons up onto the oxygen. And we know that this will happen because we know that an acid chloride, when reacted with virtually anything, is going to undergo a reaction. And what we've seen before is an acid chloride reacted with an amine is going to give us an amide. So if you can picture that, you know, go ahead and take a note to yourself that you are going to end up making an amide as your product. Uh, also, since our nucleophile is on the same molecule as the electrophile, we know that we're going to be making a cyclic structure. So uh, our cyclic structure is going to have one, two, three, four, five members. One of those members is nitrogen. There's our ring. We're going to have our oxygen, chlorine, and then nitrogen still has a methyl group and a hydrogen on it because we haven't gotten rid of that. So now we have this tetrahedral intermediate here, and we know that what it wants to do is collapse those electrons on the oxygen to recreate a pi bond, and we're going to kick out chlorine in the same step. And now we have our carbonyl, and we can kind of start to see our amide here, but it still has this pesky proton on it, so we can depronate it. Now, normally I would not advocate making hydrochloric acid as a side product, but in this case, there's no indication of water being present or anything, so it's perfectly fine to say that hydrochloric acid is our side product. And that's how we get to our amide. Okay, this problem has a couple steps here. So instead of worrying about a mechanism, I'm just going to uh, go through each reagent. So uh, anytime you're starting a problem, uh, take it you know, just step by step and ask yourself, what do I have and what can that do? So our starting material over here is a secondary alkyl halide. And our first reagent is sodium cyanide. So that's sodium plus and cyanide minus, because this is an ionic compound. And we've actually seen this before. Back in OCHEM 1, we saw that this would give us an SN2 reaction, because cyanide is a good nucleophile, but it's not a good base. So it's not going to be able to do elimination. Instead, it's going to favor doing a substitution. So our product after step one is going to be a nitrile. Now in step two, we are adding in H3O plus, hydronium ion, and heat. So aqueous acid and heat 
we have nitrile, which is a carboxylic acid derivative, and we know that all carboxylic acid derivatives can be hydrolyzed back to a carboxylic acid, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. Whoa, accidentally switched to yellow. So one of the things you wanna make sure uh, you check here is that you're not accidentally gaining or losing carbons. Uh, losing carbons would be pretty difficult here because the carbon is directly attached to the ring, but um, make sure that you have the same number. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, and we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so in our next step, we have an excess of ethanol in the presence of acid. Um, that to us with a carboxylic acid should trigger the idea of Fischer esterification. So remember that carboxylic acid plus alcohol, especially in excess, plus acid, you add that all together, you're talking Fischer esterification. So we know that we're going to take that carboxylic acid and turn it into an ester. And the OR group of the ester is going to match our alcohol, which was ethanol. So this is our final product. Okay, for our last practice problem here, um, this one is actually a synthesis. So instead of giving you the reagents and you coming up with the product, uh, I gave you a starting material and a product and you need to figure out how you're going to get there. So a couple things, uh, we are starting off with an amide, which you may recall is our least reactive of our carboxylic acid derivatives that you know still has a carbonyl carbon. Um, so before we can do anything with it, a really, really smart move would be to go ahead and just hydrolyze that amide because we know that we're not going to be able to do much with the amide itself. So now that you have the carboxylic acid, you can kind of see what else has to be added on here. So there are two different ways that you can look at that anhydride product. I'm gonna draw out another equivalent of it. Um, you could view it as adding an acyl group onto the carboxylic acid, or you could view it as adding on a carboxylate group onto the starting material. Uh, now that's two different synthetic routes and both of them are completely possible and they're very similar. So, one thing that we could do, I'm gonna go ahead and write in two different colors for our two different synthetic routes. We could add vinyl chloride and create an acid halide out of our carboxylic acid. We could add in acetate and that would give us our final product. The other thing that we could do, which is actually a little faster and equally valid, would be to take our carboxylic acid, acetyl chloride, and that would also give us our final product. So that's it for the practice problems and the end of our first chapter 17 video.